or Excel questions to help you out in a job interview with Excel tests. You can download this Excel spreadsheet for free just clicking the link in the description down below. We're gonna use from basic to advanced Excel levels to solve all these four questions. I hope this video can be useful for you and let's go! In this first question I need to highlight in green the five highest orders and in red highlight the five lowest. So here I have a couple of informations like the order ID, client name, brand name and a column with the order value. I need to check the top five order values and the bottom five order values. However, instead of doing it manually, check row by row because it can take me a long time to the cows come wrong, maybe there is a smart and fast way to make that and we can use the conditional formatting to help us to automate that task here in Excel. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just to select all the numbers that make up the order value. So I'm going to select all the numbers to the last row. Okay, all the cells, all the range, now we select. So I'm going to click here in the Home tab and then Condition Formatting. And then I'm going to choose this option, Top Bottom Rules. Here I'm going to choose the top 10 items. But wait, I don't need the top 10 items, I just need the top 5. Yes, we can set the top 5, okay? So let me just click here in the top 10 items. Now, as you can see, there is a couple of cells that is already highlighted in red. However, we don't need the red and we don't need the top 10. So we can change. Instead of using the top 10, we can use the top 5. And instead of uh, paint it with head, we can paint it with green. So let me select here, green fill with dark green text. Select and then I'm gonna click OK. Now we finish the first half of this question. Now we need to highlight the bottom five items, the bottom five order values here in our list. So we can select all the range again. And then I'm gonna go to Home, Condition Formatting, Top Bottom Rules, and then I'm gonna choose Bottom 10 Items. But instead of use the bottom 10 items, I'm gonna use the bottom 5. And then I'm gonna choose the color that I want to highlight. I'm gonna use the light red, for example. I'm gonna click OK and we finish the question number one. Now the order values that make up the top 5 or the bottom 5 are stand out in red or in the green color. We can check if the conditional formatting is working. So let's say here in this, in this order value 984, I'm gonna change this result for let's say 100,000. Now this row, it's gonna make up the top five, okay? Because it's a, it's a big number. So let me just press enter and see if the, yes, the condition formatting is working. So whenever you change any value, the conditional formatting is gonna recalculate and see if this new value is in the top five or if is in the bottom five, okay? Now let's move on to the question number two, where we need to fill the orange area using a formula that can be copied out to approve or refuse a project based on the minimal requirements. So here I have a list of my projects and we have the project name, the estimated revenue, the estimated profit, and then I need to make a decision if the project is approved or refused. And to approve or refuse a project, we need to look up for two criteria. The first criteria is the revenue. So here we have the minimum requirements. The first criteria I have is the revenue. So the revenue needs to be at least 400,000. So if you check it out manually, just to understand the first, what you need to, to do. In the first project, we have a revenue of 475,000. So, okay, the first criteria is met. However, if, if we look for the profit, we have here 30,000 in the project A. However, our minimal requirements for the pro profit is 32,000. That way, the estimated profit is not met. So the decision is refused. The project is refused. How can I do in an automatic way using the if function as I said? So let's use here equal if 
and then I'm gonna double click it in the if function, one, two. There's a main problem here with the if function in Excel. The if function allows us to use one criteria. However, here I have two criteria to match. I have the revenue and the profit, two criteria. How can I use two criteria in the if function? We can use the AND function within the if function to help us. So this is called the nested function in Excel when you use a function within a function, okay? So here, let me just type and, and then I'm gonna double click it, one, two. Now I can insert my two criteria inside the AND function, and the AND function is inside the IF function. That way I can use two or more criteria with the IF function, okay? So the first criteria that I have is, I need to check if my estimated revenue is at least 400,000. And to check it, I can just type here in the end function, if this cell of the revenue is at least greater than or equal to my minimum requirements for the revenue that is 400,000. I need to lock the reference, I need to fix the reference. Uh, just gonna select the G6 cell and then I'm gonna press F4 key. Why I need to lock to fix the reference? because when I click, hold, and drag down the function, all the reference is gonna follow the drag down. So we need to fix the minimal requirements to stay in the place, okay? It's gonna never change the reference. Now our second logical, I just gonna press here, comma, and then I'm gonna insert our second logical test. Our second logical test is if the profit is at least 32,000, so I'm gonna use the greater sign and then the equal sign, and then I'm gonna select my minimal requirements for profit. I just go select select the G7, and then I'm gonna press the F4 key to lock the reference. Okay, now I just insert my two criteria, that is the revenue and the profit. Now I can close parentheses, and then I'm gonna press comma. Now I need to insert the value if all these two criteria is true. So if all these two criteria is true, I need to, to insert, I need to type the approve. I cannot just insert the approve word like that. I need to, to put the approve word between quotations mark. So let me open quotations mark. I'm gonna type approve and then I'm gonna close quotations mark. Now I'm gonna use the comma again. And if the value is false, I mean, if the revenue or the profit does not met if our minimal requirements, so the project is refused. Let me open quotations, refuse, and then I'm gonna close quotations mark, close parentheses, and then I'm gonna press enter. Okay, as we see in the beginning of the question number two, the project A is refused. Okay, it's right. However, let me just click here in the bottom corner of the cell. I'm gonna click, hold and drag down, to see the order's results. Okay, now I can see that project A is refused, the project B is approved, and so on. That way we just automate the question number two, and whenever you change any result, the decision, the if function, if the end, okay, the nested function, is gonna recalculate itself to see if the project is refused or approved. Now let's move on to the question number three, where we need to, to sell to read 5,000 in profit, five the number of shirts we need. So here we have the assumptions, price per shirt, cost per unity, and thickest cost, okay? And here we have the profitability, unit sold. This is the number we need to find. We have the revenue, variable cost, thickest cost, and then the profit. So let me just type here, let's say a thousand. One thousand and then I'm gonna press enter. Okay, the profit is six thousand. However, I need to read five thousand in profit. So let me just put a uh, nine hundred for example. Now I have four thousand. Uh, nine, nine, five, oh, enter. Okay, maybe it's a little bit trick and it can take a long time to find the right number of units sold. So to make this a little bit more easy, you need to know a very important tool here in Excel. 
just click here in the date tab and then go to what if analysis and then to go seek here we have this pop out that's going to appear for you and then you need to set the cell look the cell you need to set is this last cell here that is the profit okay you need the profit to reach 5000 5k to the value you're gonna insert 5000 and by changing the cell what is the cell you're gonna change this cell right here okay so let me just set the cell i'm gonna use the b15 to the value of 5000 by change the cell b11 or you can just click here in this up arrow and then click in the cell to select okay let me just click ok and yes now our go seeking just find the correct result let me just click here in ok and i need to i need to read a 927 shirt or if we round that number 928 shirts to read 5000 okay so let me just round the number to 928 enter okay if we sell 928 shirts we can reach the five thousand dollars in profit however if we just sell 927 our profit is just below the five thousand so this is why i need to let the 928 unit sold because this is the number to get the 5000 in profit let's move on to the question number four where you need to use a formula to find the revenue for romania in each month so here we have the country that is romania and we also have the months so we have two criteria okay the country and the month two criteria we need to look for Romania in the list that we have. So we have here Mexico, Italy, Romania, and Brazil, and so on. Okay, Romania. Rom Romania is here, and also is here, and is here too. Okay, there is three times that Romania appear in the list. However, I cannot just... Okay, so Romania appear here, and then I'm going to take that result. No, I cannot do that, because I need to check for the month too. So I, he I have two criteria to look for the country that is romania and the months that can be january february or march so let's take a look in romania in the mar in the january month so here we have romania in the january here we have february and here we have march so i go to january and then i need to take the revenue okay the revenue so the revenue is here fifteen thousand now if you we just move on to the next month that is february i need to find again the romanian and see the date and then take the revenue that is met with these two criteria to make it a little bit more automatically we can just use the sum if function in excel or some ifs okay so equal sum ifs what is the difference in between these two functions some if and some ifs in excel when you use some ifs you can use more than just one criteria so if you have two three four or whatever as many as criteria you need you can use the some ifs so let me stay if the some ifs double click it one two okay what is the sum range i'm gonna go with the revenue range and then i'm gonna press comma now i need to select the first criteria range the first cri criteria range can be the country and then i'm gonna press comma and then i need to choose the first criteria as i choose the range of the countries as my first criteria range i need to select the romania country that is here the cell romania as my criteria okay so let's just select romania it's very important to freeze all the reference so let me just select the first range that i select that is from revenue i select all the range and then i'm going to press f4 key and then i'm going to go to the range of the country i'm going to press f4 key and then i'm going to go to the reference of the romanian country i'm going to press f4 key now all the reference the columns and the cell that is typing romania is lock is freeze comma i need to select the criteria range number two 
the criteria range number two is the month. So I'm gonna click, hold, and drag up F4 key to freeze the selection, comma, and my criteria number two is the month. I don't need to fix, to froze, to lock the reference because when I just click, hold, and drag to the right, I need the month to change, okay? I need the month to be loose. So January, and then February, and then March. Let me just press enter, and the result we get is 15,000. Yeah, it's right. So let me just click, hold, and drag to the right. Okay, now we finish the question number four, and whenever, for example, we change the country name, we can see the new results of the revenue for the country. So let's say here, we change the Romania country for, let's say, Italy. I'm gonna press enter, and all the results change it. Let's change it for Mexico, for example. Okay, all the results change. This way is a very and smart, a clever way to complete tasks in Excel, because you always using some way to automate your tasks, your problems. I hope this video can help you improve your Excel skills and also help you with any Excel tests you may do. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and peace out.